when did you start making music and of course with what kind of music you started was it folk or was it something else it was sort of folk it was basically american folk in my early teens in the 1950s then i heard the skiffle groups people like lonnie donegan were making not very good english recordings of songs they'd learned from people like lead belly the deep south black singers and uh, that caught my imagination and while a lot of people followed from that directly into rock and roll i well i went into rock and roll too listening wise but uh, for performance i started looking for the roots of the skiffle stuff which meant i was listening to the black singers like uh, big bill brunzi and Led Belly and Sonny Terry and Brian McGee. And then I discovered American folk music, per se, as given to us by people like Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie. And then, when I was about 17 years old, I discovered that England had folk music too, and I could do it better. Uh, what kind of alterations happened in your musician life? Well, one side found my course as uh, a singer of traditional songs, the alterations haven't been that many. Uh, I became a professional singer in 1965 as part of a group called The Young Tradition, and there were three of us singing unaccompanied English folk song, and the group lasted only until 1969, and since then I've been a soloist singing traditional English folk song. So really, the only real alterations in my music have been to get better at it. I haven't seen any urge to change it, only to improve. Mm. Uh, what do you think is the difference between you and groups like Fairport Convention, uh, Fairport Convention today? For example, the difference between your music style and their music style? Well, I suppose, going back to what I said a moment ago, that a lot of groups see that the way forward for them is to alter the music, is to, uh, they see progress in terms of alteration, whereas I see progress in terms of improvement. Mm -hmm. um, is British traditional music unimpeachable for you? No, for you. I don't feel that there's anything wrong, anything essentially wrong in trying to drag it into the 20th century and uh, change the approach to it. If, if you're saying, do I feel there's anything essentially wrong in, say, the approach of the Oyster Band or Fairport Convention or Steel Ice Band, no, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. On the other hand, I don't necessarily think that they always do it very successfully. I think the experiment, which it still is, of trying to make an ancient music valid today, I think it's a valid experiment, but I don't mm -hmm. think that they always get it right. Ah, uh, yes. Um, in what way yourself would definite British folk music or your own music? My own music is always strongly traditionally based. Mm. Uh, my repertoire is full of lots of non-traditional songs, but they do tend to sound traditional. I've, I've, I've set a lot of poems of Rudyard Kipling to music, but they're poems that he wrote very much aware of English folk song style and the tunes I make are very aware of folk song style. And indeed, uh, my repertoire is broader than that still. I'm singing a Bob Dylan song at the moment, for example, which he has written quite consciously in the style of an American sacred folk song, a sacred harp song. Um, I don't think that one should have hard and fast boundaries on what one does, but I think that what one should do is always keep a very clear picture of the background of the music. Mm. Um, one point in British folk music was, or is in England, that is always green and pleasant and idyllic. Do you think that such an England existed at any time before? For some people it did, while other people were having a horrible time. Some people were living in idyllic circumstances. Uh, some parts of England were fairly untouched by the terrible recessions that hit agriculture. So if we're talking about rural folk music, the Copper family, their little area of England was quite blessed and they did not know the terrible hard times that hit some other areas of the country. Mm. And uh, But if you're saying, uh, uh, 
I think if I understand the question really, you're saying, are some of these idyllic sounding songs, are they giving us a clear, uh, uh, an honest picture of the way life uh. used to be? No, I don't suppose they are, but they're giving an honest picture of the way people liked to think of it. And the people who lived it, they, they, they seemed happy to, even if they were having fairly horrible lives, to sing optimistic songs. Uh, if I understand you right, you think uh, that the songs, the lyrics, uh, are the, the wishes and the dreams? Frequently the so, frequently mm -hmm. so, yes. Um, what do you think was your own part in the evolution of British folk? I think you changed, or not you changed, you're, you're one of the, of the parts in British folk music. Um, well, I think that uh, if I have an influence, probably it's making people conscious of the singing style as being something very, very important. Uh, I feel that one of the problems with a lot of the bands and a lot of the instrumentally biased groups is that they give very little attention to vocal style. Mm. Um, there are a lot of groups, naming no names, but there are lots of groups who play magnificently, but the vocals are very... they don't seem to care very much about the quality of the vocal work, where in fact essentially folk song in England was a vocal tradition, an unaccompanied vocal tradition, so the quality of the singing was always very, very important. And perhaps I've had some kind of a role along with other of the great singers like Louis Killen and Ewan McCall, for whom the way the voice is used is all important. So I'm part of this movement that's saying, hey, it's the song and the singer, not the arrangement that mm -hmm. counts. Um, there are many shadings in British folk, the Morris dancers or the political for people, for example. What do you think about them? What do you think about the political for people, for example? Well, I think there is room under this great big umbrella called folk music to include all sorts of different things, and that certainly includes room for songs making political comment. Songs of political comment have always been part of the tradition. The only thing I would take exception to is the, the strongly left-wing movement that would like to see that sort of song take over and eradicate non-political folk song. Mm. Because non-political folk song is the majority of folk song. Non-political? Oh yes, if you look at the traditional repertoire in detail, for every song that says, isn't life terrible, let's do something to change it, there are at least 12 saying, hey, isn't it great down here? Um, do you think sometimes to give up singing and playing concertino? No, not until I absolutely have to. When my voice finally gives out in old age, I'll stop. Otherwise, I'll carry on. As long as there's somebody who wants to listen to what I do, I'll do it. And this is, isn't only your hobby, it's your profession and you... For more than a quarter of a century, this is what I've done. Yeah. It's not what anyone else would call work. <laughs> Do you have idols you like to cover? You told me about the Bob Dylan song, uh, and I think you are one of the greatest Rolling Stones fans I've ever seen. Um, do you cover the song of them every time? Oh, I've been known to do a, a Rolling Stones song in the course of an evening. I do. You can't always get what you want or tumbling dice, but it would be a mistake to let that take over as well. This is all peripheral stuff. It's fun and it's... Uh, and it's good to let people know that I haven't got blinkers on and only see one path, because I see more than one <laughs> path. <laughs> I see blues, rock. <laughs> yes, um, that's all Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Folk music, English folk music, American folk music, world folk music, traditional jazz, modern jazz. I. I love an awful lot of different sorts of music. Okay, I thank you for the interview and I think you are one of the best folk roots singers. Thank you very much. And it would be very nice if we can hear some stuff of you.